Hi everyone, good afternoon to all of you here watching us coming from the Philippines and all over the country. We are currently live now via the Facebook page of um, AOS Path Agency. Let me just check if we are indeed live now. Yes, we are already live. <laughs> we're having a difficulty in figuring out how to go live via the Zoom. But good thing that we're able to use another um, video live streaming um, platform, which is the StreamYard. And thanks with the, the StreamYard that we can be able to do this uh, Facebook live discussion through the Facebook page of AUS Path Agency. So we are so sorry for that technical difficulty but good thing and we're so grateful that we are still able to do it um in despite one hour of figuring out how to do it <laughs> so welcome everyone to the bi-weekly information session of aos path agency here in aos path you can expect to receive the most updated valuable information about your us um, about your pathway to Australia. I'm seeing that we have some uh, Facebook live viewers and thanks be to your patient. Thank you for being very patient that you have waited us to be on live here in AOS Path Agency. I'm Rachel Olivar. I'm the host here in AOS Path webinar session. So AOS Path is an onboarding company for international nurses allied health professionals and skilled workers we intend to have a better opportunity in australia so just a disclaimer as well that aos path agency is not a recruitment agency but an onboarding company so they are a business entity in australia so i am joined by sir frank um the managing director of aos path and as well as um les and for Durban, the uh, CEO of AOS Path Agency. Let me just uh, bring Sir Frank to the stage here. Let me just for a while. Yeah, I'm adding Sir Frank and for Durbin there, our managing director. So uh, we will also, we have also actually invited our special guest, uh, Miss Belinda Christie, a senior negotiator from Christie Migration Agents. She has a wealth of knowledge and expertise about the transitional pathway, and she is the best person who can provide us the information on this matter. However, uh, she will not be able to attend us live on this discussion, but she was able to provide us a video that can be also very helpful with regard to our topic uh, this afternoon. So our topic that we are going to talk about is the transitional pathway. Sir Frank, would you like to uh, do the presentation? Sure, I'll we'll do the presentation now. So I'll share my screen, hopefully. Uh, okay. I can't share at the moment. Oh, here we go. Oh, for a while. Yeah, so, we'll, so what we'll do is we'll play um, the video in a second. So just going through the pathway there. So... In Australia, OzPath is a professional onboarding company. We specialise in um, placing international nurses with Australian employers. And we're also working directly with, um, with the uh, employee, employee candidates that are thinking of coming to Australia in helping them find the right pathways to employment and also to permanent residency. So with that, we have... Um, we have partnerships out there with migration agents, with visa processing agents. Uh, we also do pastoral care, chaplaincy and advocacy services for your benefit, making sure that you're settling into the role and into the country um, and into the environment where you want to work. So why? There are some great reasons to migrate to Australia. Australia does have one of the best lifestyles in the world, a diverse and welcoming culture, and we are the land of opportunity. Um, in Australia, we work to live, not live to work. We have amazing travel destinations with very high income potentials, and we are an English-speaking country. Permanent resident visas are available in Australia, and we do have a couple of different pathways uh, for that. World-class employment opportunities. The Australian healthcare industry is one of the best in the world. So when you come to work in Australia, you know that you're not only providing your vocation 
annual skill set to there, but you're actually working and learning and upgrading your skill sets in world-class uh, opportunity environments. We also have a superannuation guarantee, which we'll touch on a little bit uh, later on the presentation today, uh, but that is a, a, a retirement fund that is paid to you by law in Australia by all employers over and above your base salary, and that's currently 11%. So if you were earning $100,000 a year, you would get another $11,000 put aside for you in a superannuation fund that is there for your retirement, and that's accruing uh, compound interest year after year after year. So you have worldwide skills assessment and best medical uh, facilities available. Okay. So OzPath um, assists international nurses in navigating the complex process of becoming employed in Australia. The most significant challenges faced by health professionals coming to Australia is, is organising employment uh, with, and um, interviews with candidate employers that are looking for nurses or looking for carers. All right, so the registration is one side of it. So you go through to your international NCLEX um, licensing through IPASS processing. Then when you come to Australia, if you're wanting to work as a registered nurse, you also need to go through the OBA pathway. And that means that you actually have to sit an OSCE examination. So uh, we have partners in Australia that can also help you with the training uh, required before you sit that examination. So OSPATH has been in healthcare for over 50 years. I personally trained in 1989 and I come from a family and a background of we're all being nurses. So we have a software development company for aged care software in Australia. And with that, we're actually connected to over a thousand uh, aged care health services worldwide across six different countries with over 800 uh, clients just here in Australia alone. That means that um, we provide you with free, um, uh, free information, free training in Lee Care software if you are wanting to go to a Lee Care environment. The fact that we have so many Lee Care clients on the books as well means that we have lots of employment opportunities available for you. So your sponsor can offer you full time employment. Um, you, if you come on a student visa, you can work part time up to 24 hours a week. And but you can't be jumping around with different employers during that time. And you need to be working in a place close to where you're actually studying. So with direct employment, there's no need to keep relocating to different areas. You, there are regional and metro opportunities, and we set up your employer interviews and your opportunities for you through our online portal. So the online portal there is crm.ospath.agency, and we'll have that uh, um, up on the, on the view later on today. But the opportunity is to grow in advance. The portal is there for you as an advertisement of your skills and yourself out there to the Australian employers. The first thing to do when considering to coming to Australia is do the AFRA free online self-check. That identifies where you are. If you're coming from the Philippines, you're going to be Stream B applicants. Stream B applicants, you have to follow the onboarding assessment pathway. So you must do your NCLEX examination, example, through IPASS processing, and then sit an OSCE examination when you're coming to Australia to get your licence um, to work as a registered nurse in Australia. There are other uh, things that you must have in order to work in Australia, such as uh, your English literacy, as well as your police check or criminal check. And you need to also, if you're coming as a student, to uh, be able to prove that you can look after yourself. Otherwise, if you're coming in as direct entry as a registered nurse, sitting the OSCE examination, then the pathway is a little bit quicker. So, but you have to have the funds available to uh, pay for that OSCE examination as well. So these exams generally require training to complete. Uh, so the cost of these training for exams are added to your overall costs. So in Australia, to sit the registered nurse examination or the OSCE examination, that is a $4,000 cost Australian. And then the training there is going to be through whatever training partner that you have, but generally between two to $3,000. So it, the nurses need to either go to Adelaide or Melbourne to sit the OSCE examination. Historically, it used to be that you only could go to Adelaide 
And Adelaide had the opportunity for nurses, only 200 nurses a year, to come into Australia to sit the examination and then be registered. So not a lot considering that the Australian landscape, we need 45,000 nurses immediately. That's how much of a shortfall and how much of a demand there is right now. All right, so over the last six months, uh, the Adelaide Examination Centre increased the intake of examinations to 1,100 over the last six months. So over the last 12 months in total, Adelaide Training Centre did 1,100 examinations. They've now added, uh, as of today, the first batch of nurses will be trained and sitting there, uh, sorry, the trained nurses sitting their examinations um, in Melbourne as well. And they, they are intending to um, process uh, 5,000 plus nurses a year. So we're hoping that that can go up to at least 7,000. So um, over Adelaide and Melbourne, we can have at least seven or 8,000 nurses a year coming through. That would be awesome. And it means that it's a great opportunity uh, for international candidates, especially from the Philippines, to come sit that examination for immediate employment into Australia. Okay, the transitional pathway. It is possible to come to Australia to work in certain areas as a carer or what they call a personal care worker or an assistant in nursing or um, a personal care assistant or attendant. They're all, um, there's a couple of different names for the same thing. You're coming in as a, an experienced nurse awaiting to sit your registered nurse examination. All right. So that could be anywhere up to, you know, six to 12 months. But whilst you are in Australia working as a carer, those hours that you are working add to your permanent residency score. So to in order for you to get permanent residency, you need to show recent clinical experience of at least uh, two years clinical experience before you transition to a registered nurse. All right. If you're already a registered nurse and you simply go through the direct pathway uh, to sit the OSCE examination, you have to have at least 12 months. All right. It's a little bit harder to do it that way. So you could actually uh, try before you buy, so to speak. You could come to Australia under the transitional pathway, just sitting the NCLEX examination without sitting the OSCE examination. You can come to Australia, get a job, get employed, earn an income whilst you're studying. Uh, just for that 12, uh, 12 to, two, to two years, you can study on the student uh, visa. And then that time adds to your permanent residency score. So during that time, we can find you a sponsor that can offer you full-time employment um, under the TSS 482 visa in a designated regional area. Very hard to get that into a metropolitan area unless the um, employer has a special agreement with the government called a company-specific labour agreement or one of the aged care labour instruments. All right, so on a student visa, you can work 24 hours a week, but you can also work as many hours as you like during semester breaks and holidays. So whilst you're working, you're getting paid. So after, say, six months, you have enough money saved up as you're earning money every week and getting paid uh, to afford to sit the examination if you so like, if you so speak. So switching to the 482 or the 494 visas and RN after that, uh, once you've sat the OSCE, is pretty simple once you've actually already in the country. So there's no jumping around with different employers and actually works against you if you do uh, chop and change. You have to remember that the employers themselves are looking for a commitment from you as well. The Department of Home Affairs in Australia are also looking to see that commitment out there is that you have consistent employment uh, with one employer for that period of time before you apply for permanent residency. All right, so again, we set up all your employment interviews prior to um, either you coming to Australia or if you're already in Australia, we can set the, up the interviews for you. Okay. So historically, um, the visa process what well, used to take three to six months once lodged. It's now being as quick as 14 days, so two weeks. That's a 482 visa. When you get to Australia and you're working as a carer under a transitional pathway, once the visa has been lodged and accepted, you still need to sit an ANMAC skills assessment. Now, 
in some instances, that just means that you have to uh, lodge online all your credentials and all of your details. That usually takes about five to six weeks. So after that, you can start working straight away. Okay, so once you're on the visa, your family can come to, to come as well to Australia, uh, but you need to have that discussion with the uh, with the prospective employer up front. All right, so we need to manage their expectations. We need to manage your expectations up front as well. We generally don't recommend uh, bringing family across until after a probation period has ended. In Australia, it's pretty much mandatory that you have at least a six-month probation period uh, where the employer is making sure that you're suitable for your position and your role. All right, so once that probation period is up, that's when you look at bringing the family in. All right, in uh, regional areas of Australia, you can then have a look at the 494 visa, which is um, enables you to um, have permanent residency up to the age of 45 years old. All right, so if you're approaching 45 years old, then that's a good visa for you to consider, especially if you have young family as well, because you get Medicare and you also get educate, government education support for your children. Now, we talked about the designated areas in certain regional areas of Australia, like regional South Australia. In those designated areas, there is an aged care concession. All right, so that means that you can actually have up to the age of 55 uh, working in there um, and looking for permanent residency as well. So don't discount uh, coming to Australia just as a carer on the transitional pathway, especially if you are an older individual. And then after three years uh, on a 494, you can actually transition to a one-on-one. So you can get permanent residency quite easily, so long as you're showing consistent work. Okay. So this following slide shows um, a pathway. If you are working in Australia for two years, after two years, you can then have a look at the 482 visa for permanent residency on the modified 186 uh, visa pathway. Now, it is a higher cost and it's relying on the sponsor to, um, on the employer to sponsor you for uh, permanent residency, but it's a pretty short process. All right, now, you don't get Medicare until apply for the 186 and you're still paying local school rates only when granted the 186. However, if you opt to go to a 494 visa after the first two years of working with an employer, it's another three years with an employer, but then um, you can actually get Medicare and local school rates. You're not relying on the sponsor for a visa. Overall, it's cheaper and it's a definite pathway to permanent residency. All right. However, you cannot change your visa for three years and you can't move to Metro either. All right. So that means that potentially you're there with the same employer for up to five years, but you're guaranteed permanent residency. Now, a bit of a disclaimer there, as uh, we'll, we'll show a, a video from Belinda um, from Christie Migration. Uh, at all times, everything is subject to change, all right? So it's your best interest to make sure that you're contacting us or you're contacting uh, the migration agent when you're ready to make any changes in your life because there might be things pending that you're not aware of that uh, you're getting yourself ready to do one thing or another and then a month later... Um, the environment changes, the landscape changes in Australia. So always, always make sure that you're communicating with OzPath or with the migration agent that we put you through. Okay, so the transitional path steps are, number one, do your AFRA self-check. All right, it's free online and you can do that in about five minutes. Begin the OBA with AFRA and register with OzPath online on our portal. Study and study hard and pass the NCLEX examination. Once you start, you've you passed and you have uh, your NCLEX examination results as passed, the next step then is to do your English literacy and make sure that you fulfill any other requirements such as your criminal check and your health check. All right, so you're, you're going to need at least uh, one and a half years clinical experience and um, get employment for OSPATH to work as a personal care worker or PCA or you can come on the direct pathway as a registered nurse. So if you begin your OSCE studies and you complete your OSCE examination, we can place you pretty much immediately in Australia, very, very quickly. 
After three years, you can self sponsor for the 19 visa. That's an option. And after a further one year, apply for citizenship in Australia. Right, so, one of the uh, main things that we are that we're asked is, well, how much do Australian nurses, registered nurses or carers, um, earn? If you come to Australia, the average nurse salary is about forty one dollars thirty two an hour. All right, so you're learning about eighty eighty thousand five hundred seventy four dollars per year as an average. If you're working in metropolitan areas. Uh, it's going to be different than if you're working in a rural or regional area of Australia. Reason being is the rural rural and regional areas of Australia, they want to incentivise the nurses to come to those areas because there's, less, there's more demand for it, but less nurses wanting to go to the rural and regional areas. Australia is a very, very large country, all right? So we're land of uh, wide open spaces and we have a concentration of population in our capital cities. If you're working in a capital city such as Adelaide or uh, Melbourne or Sydney, especially with the larger population centres, you're going to find that the average commute time for an employee is going to be anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour, both ways, home to work, work to home. All right. That's just the way it is in Australia and in a, a lot of larger population centres. Considering that, if you go to certain areas of Australia, such as Adelaide or Brisbane or Canberra or Perth, Western Australia, in South Australia, for example, in Adelaide, if you travel 45 minutes to an hour out of the main metropolitan area, you're already in what they consider to be rural and regional areas. And there are some fantastic opportunities opportunities out there from employers where the employers will be incentivising um, the offer for you to come work for them, such as providing accommodation support or subsidised accommodation, different incentives within um, the organisation as well, such as salary sacrificing and salary packaging, which just reduces your tax taxable amount but gives you benefits for you can pay um, your bills out of your wage up front and then that reduces your um, end tax results. So you actually, even though you're paying bills, you have more money left in your pocket. There's all these different schemes and incentives that employers can do. Right? Most entry-level positions as a registered nurse starts at about around about the $77,000 a year. All right? If you're a very experienced worker and you come in, um, you most experienced workers will make up to a hundred thousand dollars a year as registered nurse. So after a couple of years, you have that experience, you're going to be on a very, very good income. Carers, on the other hand, depending on where you are in Australia, carers will be earning an average of around about uh, between fifty-eight thousand and sixty-five thousand dollars a year. That's your entry base salary. If you're working in a designated area migration area, the minimum wage that you will earn until you become a registered nurse, will be $63,000 a year. All right, that's around about two and a half to three times what a registered nurse earns in the Philippines now. Okay, so going on OzPath, uh, you can actually register for free. as a, It says nurse, but as a nurse or a carer, it's the same. You can register as a nurse on our portal by just simply going to crm.ozpath.agency and then uh, clicking on the Join Our Premier Agency Now button, filling in your details, and then um, as an employee, just go to Nurse Registration, enter as much information as you can through the portal. You can go back into the portal any time in the future, and you can actually keep putting your information in there and adding information. Remember that this portal is for your benefit. It's free. You can go onto this portal, add as much information as you like in there and answer the questions and put the information in there. The reason is the employees are looking daily at the portal and they're shortlisting potential candidates for um, employment offers. The employers go through there and they request interviews with you. All right. So every person that goes through the portal will also get a free half hour session with our HR manager 
in the Philippines to go through what your requirements are and your individual needs are, all right? We'll assist you in uploading um, your CV, your resume. We'll go through that with you and we'll get your, all your information there um, on the portal for you and start walking you through what the requirements are for you to actually progress to be um, eligible for interviews with um, employers in Australia. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory to go through there. And again, you can go through and update details at any time. All right, so you don't no need to set, uh, sift through countless job offers, and make numerous applications. We do that for you. We will be matching your profile to eligible um, employers. And the employers are always coming up to, to us and asking us uh, for eligible nurses to interview. All right, so once you've actually put that through, We'll contact you usually within about 48 hours and uh, you can actually then um, choose a appointment time for a half hour appointment with our HR manager. Okay. So the advocacy services, OzPath goes a little bit further than uh, just like a recruitment agent. We're an onboarding agent, but we're also very much invested in looking after your pastoral care. So we plug you into local chaplaincy services in Australia in the area that you'll be looking to go to. We make sure that uh, you're understanding and helping you set up with all the required insurances that you need. If you're becoming here and you're working as a registered nurse, you need what's known as professional indemnity insurance. All right, it's part of the license registration requirements in Australia. You also need, as we alluded to earlier today, your superannuation fund. So we help you set that up. If you need assistance in setting up your bank accounts, um, getting a driver's license, looking at uh, different areas of accommodation, we can assist you with that. Can't do everything for you, but we'll give you the best opportunity for you to be settling into your environment when you're here. All right. We have already aligned with the Australian chap Filipino Chaplaincy Services, um, and we plug you into that network very, very quickly. There is a large Filipino population in Australia as well. And in certain areas, especially in the rural and regional areas, for example, in South Australia, there's a large Filipino community already that are very happy to help support you, especially in the early days where you need it most. All right. As I said, we're also aligned with Lee Care. Lee Care has uh, many, many um, uh, employer customers in Australia. So we do have an opportunity to give you the best available employment opportunities through Lee Care clients as well. And we give you free training in that award-winning software. We also provide you with a free access, free membership to Osmin. When you are coming to Australia as a registered nurse, again, one of the requirements of your registration is that you have continuing professional development. Osmed is an online learning uh, portal as well that we've uh, partnered with. We will offer you free 12 months worth of access to Osmed's full 1,275 uh, online professional development points that then you can uh, download digital certificates. You can take that to different employers and that just stays with you as part of your um, uh, part of your resume, your CV, and that can be uploaded into the OzPath portal as well. Employers can see that and then they're more likely to offer you employment if they can see that you've actually uh, going through your professional development, your continuing professional development. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, going to play a video. Uh, hopefully this will work. All right, and this is from our uh, partner, Belinda Christie. So uh, can you actually see the video there on the screen? Yes, Frank, we can be able to yeah. see it. Okay, so yeah. hopefully... Yeah. Um, I'll play it for a couple of seconds just to make sure. Please let me know if you can hear it. Hi, my name is Belinda Christie. Can you hear that? Yeah, mate. All good. Thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Belinda Christie, and I'm a registered migration agent with Christie Migration Agents. I've been a registered migration agent for about the last eight years. About 10 years before that, I was an immigration officer. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about the 482 and the 494 visa. The 482 visa is a temporary skilled shortage visa. You have to have an employer to sponsor you and generally you need an occupation that's on the skilled occupation list. Now, if you have an occupation like a carer that is not on the skilled occupation list, 
You need to find an employer that has a company-specific agreement, that has an agreement with the government to allow them to sponsor carers, um, or it has to be an employer that is in a Dharma area that is in an area that allows carers to be sponsored. Again, you need to have um, an employer to sponsor you and you need to meet the minimum requirements. They all vary depending on the Dharma agreement or company-specific agreement. Uh, if you're looking to come as a registered nurse um, under the 482 program, that uh, is on the skilled occupation list, so it's a bit more of a straightforward process. Uh, the 494 visa, on the other hand, is a regional employer skilled sponsored visa. Uh, one of the benefits is that once you apply for the visa and granted it, you can obtain Medicare. Um, and possibly send your kids to school for local rates, whereas with the 482 visa, you don't have access to Medicare and uh, you may not uh, obtain local rates for your children. Uh, the 494 is a five-year visa. After three years of working for uh, your employer, then you can uh, apply for the 191 visa if you meet the requirements uh, and uh, you don't need your employer to sponsor you under the 482 program. If you want to apply for permanent residency, uh, you can usually apply after two years under the regular program, so say as a nurse, um, uh, for the 186 transitional pathway and uh, the employer will need to sponsor you for the 186 visa as well. Uh, for um, a carer to transition to permanent residency, that is a little bit more difficult because that is... Um, again, not on the skilled occupation list. So um, if you were to work as a carer and then switch over to being a nurse and be sponsored um, again under the 482, then you could transition to the 186. But again, whatever works for you in terms of a 494 or a 482, uh, if you have a family, obviously the 494 is probably um, a better option for you if you're worried about spending the money on healthcare and your kids going to school. Um, if you come over to Australia to do your OSCE exam on a tourist visa, you can't work. You can apply for work if you want to look for work as a PCA. That could be a possibility if you meet the requirements. Um, but you, again, cannot work unless that visa is granted. You also have to check what your conditions are on your tourist visa. Um, if you're looking to uh, if you're over the age of 45 or you're creeping up to that age and you think, well, if I do a 482, I'm going to be over the age of 45 to do a 186, which is the permanent transitional visa and usually has a cutoff age of 45, um, you could possibly apply for a 494 if it's in a regional area because there is no age limit on the 191, but there is on the 494. So you have under the age of 45, but, you know, if you're 44, um, and in three years' time, you're going to be over 45, you could possibly still get the 494, or you can look at the Dharma areas that may have an age concession up to the age of 55 that allows for you to actually apply for um, the 494 or um, even sometimes the 186 that's over the age of 45. But again, you've got to look at the concessions in those areas. Uh, and I want to preface this to say this is what the laws are at this time. Things can change at any time. So always check before you uh, plan your plan your future, say in six months' time, you're thinking, okay, now's the time I want to come. That's when you've just got to double check that the laws are the same or if they've changed, if you still meet the requirements. So good luck and hopefully I talk to some of you soon. Okay, so that's um, that's talking about... 494 and the 186 as what we were what we uh, were talking about we have um again we were talking about the uh ospath portal and we have sponsorships available now in australia so we'll uh, open it up i suppose to any questions uh that anyone might have now if you have any questions, guys, for our Facebook Live viewers, so feel free to um, comment your questions here in the Facebook Live discussion so that Frank and Les, who are with us here, will be able to provide you the answers that you need with regards to any clarification that you have in mind. And also, one of the things that we can help in IPES processing is we can assist for your Australia application 
and as well as the NPLEX Honor Review Program via the IPAS on Review and Mentoring Academy. So AUS Path is working closely with 9.09er as well with regards to your English language proficiency examination. So guys, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, anything that you'd like to agree less? Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, apologies, obviously, for the little uh, hiccup at the beginning, but uh, we got there. Um, I've actually posted a link in the uh, comments on the Facebook chat. Um, on the transitional pathway. So everything's in detail there. So make sure you take the time to really read through that because it goes through everything in detail. We're always getting a lot of, a lot of questions. That's the most popular questions that we get on um, on Facebook and the Messenger is how does it all work? And everything's there on, on that on, on that link on that blog. Um, so it's really just at uh, ospath.agency. So it's www.ausPath agency and you can see um, under the nurses tab you'll see there's the nurse info you can click on that it's also on our portal which is crm.ospath.agency as well where you can join up and all the how to how to join and everything's there so make sure if you've got any questions you can go straight there and uh, you get all of that information so basically as a recap um, obviously do your AFRA self check um, most of you will find you're in string B, which means you have to do the OBA. So therefore you need to do the NCLEX. So make sure you sign up with iPass processing for the review. That way you can guarantee to pass <laughs> your NCLEX. You don't want to go through all that trouble and not pass. Um, and iPass are fantastic. Obviously Southeast Asia's largest NCLEX provider. Um, probably 10,000 people, I don't know, a, a year is uh, going through there. So make sure you're one of those people as well and you pass that NCLEX. Um, so on the transitional pathway, that means that you can come as a PCA, personal care worker or assistant in nursing, to work in one of the regional areas un under the Dharma, and we place you into those positions. In fact, one of the areas that we're closely working with now is in a regional area is actually larger than the entire Philippines, <laughs> just that regional area. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, lot of area there and, and uh, big uh, Filipino communities there as well. And once you're here, of course, um, then you can um, you know, afford to do your OSCE um, and pass the OSCE exam as well. So the two pathways, the main two pathways, is the first one is the TSS 482 visa, which is transitioning to the 186 visa, or the 494 visa, which transitions to the 191 permanent residency visa. And under the 494, you get Medicare as well, and it's a self-sponsored one. So after three years, you can self-sponsor um, for the 191 visa which is not um, uh, uh, required uh, by the employer to have to do that. So two good good ways. And the 494 actually lets you um, come in if you're a little bit older as well. So if you're, as Belinda said, if you're getting up around that 43, 44, and you want to apply for your visa, uh, permanent residency, make sure you're probably um, getting the right advice there and get onto that uh, the 494 visa as well. So I think that's it in the scope. Um, yeah, if there's any questions, get into the Facebook comments and uh, we'll be there um, to answer any questions. So yeah, back to you, Rachel, if you want to close off and Frank. Thank you, Les. One of the interesting things that you have mentioned earlier, Frank, is the addition of the Melbourne um, OSCE um, examination testing yeah, centers. Uh, do you have an additional information about this? Yeah, look, uh, I was there. I was, I was very privileged to uh, visit um, the training centre last Thursday, uh, not yesterday, the week prior, and I was uh, very privileged to talk to um, Christine, the CEO of AURM, AURM Pathway, which is a training uh, body next door to the actual uh, clinical skills lab, and we, we've aligned ourselves with them too. So we do encourage, um, and you can find their details um, on our website, and um, we'll, we'll put some details up, um, some more information over, over the next week onto our website as well. So look out for that. Um, we, same as with, uh, in, with IPASS review for the NCLEX, it's important for you to be prepared. All right, just don't jump into it because it is a financial commitment. You want to make sure that you give yourself the best opportunity, put your best foot forward. All right, so these 
organizations are out there not just to take your money. They're there to absolutely make sure that you have the best opportunity for your journey, for your pathway, for both you and your family for the future. All right. They, they want to see you pass. It's a good advertisement for them. And it's great for the Australian landscape for the healthcare network, which so desperately needs um, good nurses like yourselves coming in. All right. So any offshore applicant have a chance to work as a PCA? Yep. Yeah. So if you're an MCLEX passer and you have the English literacy um, score um, of uh, 6.0 and above as an average, you can come to Australia and work as a PCA. Okay, you need to have at least a minimum of two years clinical experience um, post-grad and it, within the last couple of years, because what they're looking for is recent clinical experience. All right. So remember that every person that joins up for free on the OSPATH portal will get a half hour session with our HR manager. All right. So we'll be able to go through that with you, do a quick audit and double check and give you the best pathway and to just work it out for you individually, for you and your family. See, this is the pathway going forward. Now, if you come to Australia and you're going to study the OSCE, for the OSCE and you sit the OSCE examination, once you've sat that examination, it's going to take you around about six to eight weeks for you to get the results, the examination results, all right? So that's a consideration for you, which we can assist you with as well to go back through um, to say, okay, should I come just on a tourist visa or a student visa if I'm going to work as a PCA or am I just going to sit the OSCE? I've got enough clinical experience and I just want to go direct entry through to an RN. So we're going to help you with that. At the time when you've actually come to Australia and you sit that OSCE examination, it's not over, right? Now the work starts. You think, oh, my gosh, I've just worked really hard to sit the OSCE. And yeah, but now during that six to eight week time period before you get your results, that is the absolute best time for you to receive interviews. All right. You will... Uh, you can be coached. We can assist you with your interview process on how to present yourself in an interview. That's another one of the services that we offer. But during that six to eight period of time, you may receive offers um, of employment for you know three, four, five different employers. All right. If you've got enough clinical experience, you've passed the OSCE examination, it already means that you've passed the NCLEX. You just need to make sure that you've done your police check your health check, and you've done your English literacy. All right, so as uh, Whitley is asking there, I'm an NCLEX Australia passer and IELTS passer. Yes, you do need to do your police check and health check, all right, prior to an invitation to employee sponsorship. Now, we're working with a lot of employers that understand that it is a process. So you're still going to be able to get um, interviews done and they will offer you um, contracts of employment subject to... All right, subject to you having an English literacy pass, subject to you having a clean uh, police check and criminal history check, subject to you having your insurances in place, all right, and you, have you done your health check, all right. So the, the employers, if you present yourself very well and you upload all the information into the OSPATH portal, which they're checking and looking at every day, you're presenting yourself in the best light. You're going to give yourself the best opportunity, all right. So a question there from Barbara is coming, uh, explain the possibilities for over 45-year-olds um, coming through the PR pathway. If you're over 45, you need to focus on the rural and regional areas of Australia called the Dharma areas. The number one area for you to consider employment opportunities in Australia is South Australia, all right? The entire state of South of South Australia is considered to be a Dharma area. There are um, a couple of other areas in Australia, uh, which is in Northern Territory, but you go uh, and the different areas of different states. But the most commonly um, resourced area for employers looking for staff is to get, and for you as a candidate employee, is to look at South Australia, and we can certainly help you with that. Frank, unless anything that you'd like, maybe Frank, anything that you'd like to um, 
to say to our candidates or greetings to our candidates before we're going to end our session for today's discussion for the in free information session with regards to the Oh, look, you know, just keep, keep positive, make sure, you know, you keep believing in yourself. Um, it's Ash Wednesday today, the first day of Lent. And, you know, in Lent, we're always looking at uh, offering up something and, you know, giving up something. Just don't give up on yourself. Right? That's all I can say. Just make sure that you understand that you're not there to do it alone. Uh, we're not supposed to be an island, you know, all to ourselves. Ask questions. Remember that you're part of a community. So also when you're studying, you know, uh, create your networks with your fellow students because they're going to be the ones also that are going to help support you during this time of um, and this pathway and this journey. Thank you, Frank and Les, for the wealth of information that you have provided to those who are interested of uh, stepping up on their career and be able to stay and live and enjoy Australia after some years. So, guys, thank you very much for being with us and for patiently waiting to be with us to have this uh, Facebook thank Live you. discussion via the AOS Path Agency. As you know, um, we are providing the free information session to you um, every two weeks. That's bi-weekly. So by after two weeks, we'll be providing you the information with regards to metro and regional areas. I think it's important for us to be able to discuss to you so that you can also be able to discern which um, place do you want to go, um, which place do you want to have uh, some growth in your career once you're already there in Australia? So we'd like to uh, thank uh, Sir Les and Ferdorben and Frank and Ferdorben for giving us the, their information and for giving us their time uh, to provide, to have this transitional pathway discussion um, in this afternoon. So uh, good bless to everyone and happy Valentine's to everyone. And we look forward to seeing you again in our bi-weekly session after two weeks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.